Well, good evening. Happy Monday to everyone. Welcome to Durham. Welcome to Duke. Uh, my name is Samuel Carpenter. I'm Senior Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions here. Uh, you are part of our welcome webinar for students and families uh, who have been recently admitted to Duke. And to start things off, I do want to offer my sincere congratulations to you and yours. Uh, this is a marvelous opportunity, a well-deserved opportunity, um, and we're all happy for you. Uh, we're allowing some people to uh, access the webinar things now. The numbers are climbing. We're over 300 attendees at the moment. I hope everyone is well wherever you are logging in from. I know there are different time zones out there. Uh, it's seven o'clock here in the east, but certainly in on the west coast, it's four o'clock. I suspect that we might even have some international folks joining us, so it might be very early in the morning wherever you are. But again, thanks for attending uh, this event. Uh, is part of our Blue Devil Days program for newly admitted students and families. Uh, during the month of April, we will host uh, virtual sessions that will cover a variety of topics, as it were, uh, uh, whether it be financial aid, whether it be academic support, whether it be residential life or signature research opportunities at Duke. Uh, we hope that you will attend as many as you can. Uh, so that you will be informed moving forward as you make that final decision by May 1st uh, in terms of where your child will call home for the next four years. Uh, we will also host four in-person events at the end of April. Uh, these are full-day programs where you and your student can meet with faculty, current students, uh, attend some specific academic programs, whether it be in the Trinity College of Arts and Sciences, or the Pratt School of Engineering, you can tour the campus or just try to get a sense of things as it were. Um, take care of some housekeeping issues at the moment. Uh, this is being closed, this is closed captioning. We will have that. Um, you will have the opportunity to provide any questions for any of our panelists via the Q&A tab, which you see at the bottom there. If you are, are having any technical issues, uh, please use of the chat, as it were. Uh, in terms of programs moving forward, a complete listing of our programs is currently posted on the admitted student website. If your child has not shared that with you as of late, I would certainly recommend that you he, he or she does so, so you have a sense uh, of things. Uh, this program and other virtual programs are being recorded. They will be posted on our YouTube channel, uh, so you can access them um, at, at, a, at a later date. Uh, the purpose of the program this evening is to simply offer you a glimpse or a tip of the iceberg, as it were, uh, as to who we are uh, as an institution, that kind of thing. So uh, now that I've kind of taken up some airspace a little bit, um, I would like for my panelists to introduce themselves, and I'm going to start with our esteemed Dean of Undergraduate Admissions, uh, Christoph. Thank you. Hey, good evening. I'm Christoph Gutentag. Uh, I'm the Dean of Undergraduate Admissions here at Duke, and um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this program. Sam, do you want us each to introduce ourselves and then talk, talk a little bit, or would you like me to chat a little bit and then have, have our other uh, panelists introduce themselves? I think you could certainly chat a little bit, and then I'll introduce the other panelists as we okay. Will. All right, that sounds great. All right, so um, it's this is always a really interesting situation for me to be in uh, because because this is it's this wonderful moment. You don't get very you don't get very many moments like this where the tables are turned, where we know that you all have been working really hard uh, for weeks, months, years uh, to put yourself in this situation, and and here you are, and now. And now you're in a position to be picky, uh, to make choices, to compare, to analyze, um, and, and to think about what the right match is for you. We think that Duke is a wonderful place. We think Duke is a spectacular place. And we think that it 
it just offers so much to the undergraduates so well. It's really striking to me how much Duke likes to say yes to its students, the degree to which it not only makes opportunities available to students, but it makes it possible for everybody to just take advantage of them. And that's, I think that that's, I think that's unusual. I want to say a couple of things before I pass, uh, b- before uh, I pass this off to my, to my colleagues. Obviously, I want to say congratulations as the Dean of Undergraduate Admissions. I have some sense of the quality, the diversity, the talent, uh, the, 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 the interests and the, and the sense of community that uh, that you all represent, that you all embody. Uh, one of the things that Duke is known for is, is, that, is that, I think, unique combination of academic intensity, of, of pride, of ambition, and, and at the same time, a community of students that support each other, that are happy at each other's success, and, and, and that, and that help each other succeed rather than be in competition with one another. So congratulations for what you've, for what you've accomplished and what you've gone through the last three or four years. I mean, we know it's been difficult. And I will say, I'll say on behalf of myself and on behalf of my staff, we're so impressed with what you all managed to do in very challenging circumstances and very difficult circumstances. And some of you were many of you are just so affected and so limited by by what's happened over the last three years and the way you persevered and the way you dealt with difficult circumstances, um, sometimes very considerable personal loss um, was really moving to us. And, 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 and we admire it and, and we think that that as difficult as those lessons have been, as challenging as these years have been, uh, in in the long run, I I think that'll serve you well. Obviously, in college, it'll serve you well. But but in the long run, it'll serve you well. Um, and and we really admire what you all managed to do. So so I I really wanted to say congratulations. The second thing is, it doesn't happen that often that you are in one situation, one set of circumstances, one environment, and you know what the next environment will be like. Well, once you make a decision by May 1st, once you decide, of course, that you're going to be coming to Duke, which is, it's the natural decision. It's the, really the only right decision. Um, I, I mean, I just, if you don't know that already, well, you will after this hour and after you come for Blue Devil Days. But after you decide that, you, that, that you're coming to Duke, you're going to have this span of months where you know where you're going to be. That is set and you're not there yet. And you're going to have this, these sort of wonderful opportunities to take advantage of that. Cherish that time, cherish that. That does not happen as often as we would like and certainly for such an extended period of time. So, so, so take advantage of that. And one of the things that I would recommend very strongly is find a way, find a way to do something outside of whatever bubble you're in. And we all, you know, we we all who live where we live, who work where we work, who, who work where we work, who have the habits that we do, tend to find our tend to find ourselves in the same situation over and over and over again, the same social group, the same classes, the same physical environment. Anything you can do between now and August to 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 expand your your experiences. To expand your, and I'm not going to say expand your horizons. That's a little bit of a cliche, but but to but to find yourself outside of your bubble, outside of your existing context, <clears throat> and and to explore, really explore, really try something. Boy, if there's ever a time to fail, not in your classes, but otherwise, now's the time. So and if you're and, and and please don't fail in your classes and and to that point I I do want to remind you you might want to read the next to last paragraph of the admit letter which 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 does encourage you to uh, academically and 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 in your behavior to stay on the path that you are but but there are opportunities to do things so take advantage of that um, I only have two other things that I want to that I want to say three one be kind to your classmates. 
right? You, you, you know, you have this, you have this admission to Duke. Um, um, you know, some of your classmates, many of your classmates didn't accomplish everything that they were hoping to. So being nice to them, uh, being kind to them, being respectful of them is really important. That's the first thing. The second thing is um, people helped you get here. It may have been parents, may have been other relatives, may have been friends, may have been teachers, may have been teachers from eighth grade. Somebody or some people helped you along the way. And I can't stress enough how much it would mean to them for you to thank them, for you to just, you know, send them a note, send them a text, send them an email, um, um, you know, whatever, whatever way you want to express yourself. Thank the people, at least one person who helped you get the, get to where you are right now. And especially if it's somebody that you don't see very regularly, reach out to them, thank them. They will appreciate it. And, and of course, you'll feel better. Um, the final thing I want to say is that you are now almost at the end of a really rigorous, challenging, possibly interesting uh, and insightful process. I'm always interested in your experience of the admissions process. Um, so any suggestions that you might have now as a successful uh, applicant to do, any suggestions that you might have for how we can improve the admissions process? Uh, maybe, maybe there are essay questions that we should have asked or instructions that we should have done differently or anything that you think might have made this a little more manageable or enjoyable or interesting to you, um, drop me a note. Uh, my email is christoph.gutentag at duke.edu. Um, and, uh, and, 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 you know, when you're, when you're on campus in the fall, um, let's get together. We'll get a, we'll get a cup of coffee or we'll get a, we'll get a bite to eat. So anyway, that's, that is what I wanted to say. And I think, uh, I think I would like to, so and congratulations again. So let me turn this over now to Mary Pat McMahon, who is a friend of mine and the vice provost and vice president for student affairs. And the person who really has the, has the, the, the privilege of, of, of managing um, the, the, the student experience at Duke. So um, over to you, Mary Pat. Thanks, Christoph. Mary Pat, your show. All right. Thank you, Christoph. Thank you, Sam. Um, it's delight. It's awesome and amazing and wonderful to be here with Perspective Blue Devils um, as you're thinking about, as Christoph said, where your options are. And I hope you're taking a minute to take in the hard work, uh, the sort of rewards of your hard work over the past few years. As Christoph said, in a pretty un unusual time, you're going to hear that a lot. Um, but boy, have you done a lot to get yourself into the seat where you get to explore your options right now. So congratulations to you. Congratulations to the, the supporting cast around you um, who helped make this opportunity happen. Uh, first thing I'm going to tell you is that when uh, people come to Duke, they find their people, right? They find their purpose and they find their people. And it can be a little bit overwhelming because folks are fired up here, really passionate about all kinds of stuff um, and sort of ready from the jump externally, right? And the thing to know as you look around and as you start looking at colleges and thinking about where you can picture yourself in a few weeks or a few months um, is that we are all going to go through a phase of adaptation and adjustment and figuring out what's the right fit. Um, and by that, I mean the people in the Duke community who help you get on board here and come through and be, um, be a really fully valued and important member of our community and the people around you who show up on the first day. We have a very high energy start um, to your Duke experience for experiential orientation in the first first week where you get adjusted everything at Duke. You've already found out, you'll find out more over the summer, how many people would be excited to partner with you, work with you and be connected to you while you're here on campus. Um, but we all figure it out, right? It's, it, nobody needs to be perfect. And if you come in perfect, we won't, uh, we won't get the whole authentic and really growthful you. So that's my very first message to you. Welcome. Thanks for your hard work. We're ready to help you grow when you're here. Um, student affairs, um, um, as Christoph said, it's, it's a lot of the things that are outside of your co-curricular and your curricular experience. So not your classes, not your, not your incredible research with your faculty. I'm going to hand that to my colleague in a second. Um, but the pieces around um, where you live, 
how you think about your well-being, how you attend to sort of the full ways that you engage outside the classroom um, in activities, student leadership, residential life, um, our career center, thinking about what you're going to do with your Duke degree after you graduate, um, working with our identity and cultural centers, understanding um, sort of who and what aspects of your salient identity are going to be important to you um, as you navigate this campus and how do you want to build programs and understanding and opportunities for your peers to really jump in and sort of make this your home. Wherever background you're coming from, whatever town, small town, big, big city um, around the world or, you know, somewhere in the Durham zip code right now, um, we know that everybody coming in is going to work on, again, making this your home. So um, I can say all kinds of things when we get into the Q&A. Um, around ways people get involved. I will echo Christophe on the on the piece of take a little time and rest um, as you sort of as you process a little bit on what's coming. Um, the best thing you can do this summer is, is focus on sort of being intentional, reflecting a little bit, getting some rest and being sort of ready um, on day one when we get started. We'll talk more about orientation, I am sure. Um, I wanna introduce my colleague, um, Candace Watt-Smith. And the thing I'll tell you is that she is a faculty member, a double, triple, triple dookie. It's three degrees from Duke, undergrad, master's, and PhD, um, and lives in Southgate Residence Hall. So she and her family uh, live with our students in the first year campus. She's one of our faculty and residence members. And this spring, this semester, has joined us as the vice, Pro vice provost of undergraduate education. The thing you really need to know about Dr. Smith is that I have not run into her on campus one time in the past three or four months without her being with a current student, whether it's one of her Baldwin scholars, whether it's somebody from the Mellon Mays program, whether it's a student that lives in Southgate or somebody that heard her talk. We were both at a talk in February um, at Black History Month and I heard and, and Candace Watt Smith got up and introduced the speaker and all the students behind me, all the women behind me was like, there's Candace Watt Smith. And they're, they're, the, the ways that our student community understands that they, they can sort of thrive and grow and really connect to brilliant faculty who invest in their whole experience. You've got no better uh, partner um, in thinking about how that could be your experience here at Duke than hearing from Dr. Smith. So I'm going to hand the baton to you, Sam, and then to Candace. Is that how this is going to work? That's fine. Yes. Mary Pat, well done. Thank you so Thank much. You. Okay. Dr. Smith. Um, as mentioned, I um, am the um, Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education. And what that means um, is that I am student's chief academic um, advocate. I, um, I focus on all the ways that students intellectually engage mostly outside of the classroom. So, um, you know, with faculty over lunch, uh, in the dorms, uh, in your residence hall, across the globe. Um, so, you know, the, the good thing, as Mary Pat mentioned, is that I um, live with first year students. And so when I was invited to do this, I text on the group me, um, why Duke? And so I got a bunch of answers and I'm just going to tell you three of what um, the class of 2026 that live in Southgate said about why you should come to Duke. And there are a lot. So I'm just going to choose three. One um, is because there are a ton of opportunities to do something new, um, be it inside the classroom, outside the classroom. Um, there is going to be something that will maybe um, veer you off, maybe that strategic plan that you've had up until now, that you are going to learn to love something that you were not expecting to love. The second thing um, that they mentioned is um, actually um, echoes what Mary Pat was saying and also what Christoph was saying is that you're going to find your community here. Um, the community at Duke is multifaceted. There are so many opportunities to explore your identity, your interests, um, just kind of learn all sorts of new things. There, um, you know, we have this kind of work hard, play hard. Um, I don't know, it's informal motto in some ways. And so once one of my neighbors said, you know, um, for an introvert, that could sound like a bit too much, but um, there's a place for introverts. There's a place for extroverts. There's a place for everybody um, here at Duke. And then just so we can get to your questions, I'll say the, the last thing that they mentioned um, is a 
the resources at Duke are amazing. And so many of the resources are human resources. They're advisors, they're your vice provost, they're your professors, they're your um, academic um, resource center. They're um, just, there's so many opportunities, the career center, I could go on and on and on. Um, but, you know, those were, I'll just stop there and, and I'll, I'll chime in on other ones that people have mentioned, but it is really just a thrill to have this opportunity to say, uh, I mean, you know, obviously I'm, I, maybe I'm biased, um, but I also, um, I'm, a, I'm an academic, so I am um, driven by the evidence. And I think that um, Duke is, is just one of the, if not the best places um, for so many of us to, um, you know, live this next four. For me, it was nine years of my life and I enjoyed every single one of them. Wow. Thank you so, so, so much. Well, listen, um, we, we're not seeing a lot of questions just at the moment. Uh, we, I do have a couple of colleagues who are in the background who might be addressing some of those questions in written form. But I want to start things off um, until we get some questions from the audience here. Um, we like to think of Duke as a community of scholars, both as students and with faculty. And so maybe we can dive into, into that a, a little bit. Christoph, I know you initially shared some of your thoughts um, in terms of this, this newly admitted class, but can you contribute anything more in terms of your thoughts? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. And, and I, I think that, that I, wanna, I want to talk a little bit about what we saw and a little bit about what, I, what, I, what I'd like students to come into this ready, come into this place ready to do. Um, uh, uh, Y'all are really smart. Um, I, I mean, let's just put that on the on the table, right? I mean, you're 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 very accomplished. You've you've done very very well in school. Um, you've worked incredibly hard. You've probably slept far too little. Um, you've you maybe you've worried a little more than you needed to, but you know we understand um, you know, sort of what this is what this is all about. You're you're really well prepared, and and you've established, for the most part, you've established good good study habits, good working habits. Um, the difference, I think, the difference academically um, between where you are and where you're going to be is the difference between being, if you will, sort of high school smart and college smart. Um, I have um, I have a lot of friends in the faculty. Um, my my wife taught uh, in the School of Public Policy for several years, and she had a great phrase that really struck with me. Uh, that really stuck with me, and it was she once said to me, she was talking about the students. They make leaps in front of your eyes, like within the course of a semester. Their their ability whether it's writing, whether it's analysis, whether, whether it's synthesis, whether it's careful thought, whether it's in the humanities or the social sciences or the natural sciences, right? you will grow and grow markedly and noticeably during the, course, during the course of a single semester. The faculty here are unbelievably committed to that growth. And they will they will push you. They will encourage you. They will they will challenge you. They will support you. Um, all of those things. You, I, I want you to be ready to to get feedback about how you can do things better. I mean, I think a lot of you have been in that situation where for years people have been saying, "You're great. You're great. You're great. You're good. You're good. You're good. This is wonderful work." I want you to be prepared for an environment where people are going to say to you, this is good, you can do better. And better not by just doing more, but better by thinking a little differently and by being open to that kind of feedback from our faculty. And if you are, we know that you are ready to make those leaps 
that 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 faculty want for you. It's it's an amazing thing. You need to be ready for the level of support that you will get from the faculty that will sometimes feel like challenge, but it's but it's pushing you to be the person that you can be. And I want you to be open for that. You are prepared for it. It'll be a little different than what you're used to. Hey, thanks, Christoph. Now, speaking of faculty, Candace, I'm going to jump back to you here on this one. Um, you're a faculty member, you residential uh, advisor. What are you seeing in terms of the, the students and their level of engagement, whether it be the Baldwin Scholars Program, Bass Connections, any of those opportunities that we offer students? What are you seeing? Oh, where do I start? I mean, I think that just the ones that you named are amazing. I, I just want to, I think one thing that I want to pin down here is that you ask about community of scholars. And I think the community part is the most important part of that word. I mean, scholars is very important, obviously. But um, I think Duke is a place that values collaboration. Um, a lot of what, and I think, you know, some of my um, neighbors in Southgate would tell you is that what got you here is not what is necessarily going to make you successful here. That so much of what we did um, to get to Duke was just to, you know, work hard, but sometimes on some level work independently or competitively. And there is really not in most of your classes, I can't really think of any, I was having a conversation with someone about this, a necessity to be competitive, that um, it's a place where collaboration is um, valued and that we recognize in a place where research does matter, both for student-led research and for faculty-led research that um, may include um, all sorts of students. So just like you mentioned, um, Sam, through the through the um, through the Bass Connections program or the Mellon Mays Undergraduate Fellowship or any of um, the kind of research opportunities that you'll see people in collaboration and in community with with one another, because that's where like the best uh, innovation comes from is getting people together, sharing ideas. Um, and lifting each other up as you learn um, from your mistakes um, and from from whatever you know new insights you gave. So, and, and we see that in the classroom. Um, we see that outside of the classroom. Um, we see that in residence halls. We we try to really kind of on some level blur the distinction between um, you know. Uh, you know, your residence life and your academic life, these um, at Duke are, are, are really well blended. Um, and we hope that, you know, some of your best conversations, some of your best points of collaboration are, yes, in the classroom, but also um, where you live. Wow, thank you. Yes, I think part of the Duke community is learning outside the classroom, right? Meeting different folks, having different ideas, that kind of thing. Well done. Can I add one thing, Sam? Yeah. Um, so what the other group that tells us about this is our employers, right? So so we we work with, we did a big sort of work, we did a big work, big work, listen to me. <laughs> um, we did a we did a major trustee presentation um, about a year ago now with employers in finance, with employers in international student support. Um, we've worked with, um, I, I met with some of the folks from Meta um, last summer and I've asked several times, you know, what are our graduates look like? Um, you know, where do they go? But then what do they look like when they show up in their first couple of years in jobs? And I could list the other, other workplaces and industries. Uh, the common thing we hear back is that our students just going to Candace's point about group work and sort of then figuring out how you can sort of bring in and sort of be around peers who can do terrific work with you. Um, our students are our grads are notable in lots of different employment sectors for their ability to um, know what their part of the assignment is, help get clarity around what's coming next, um, sort of, you know, be able to sort of take their piece, get it done, keep moving and sort of think holistically about what that means. Um, our grads are also great at working with people across different generations, different identity um, and lived experiences and, uh, and across different sort of speaking styles and learning styles. You know, we've touched a little bit about introvert and sort of um, sort of neurodiversity on our campus. 
we have a community of scholars in our undergraduate population that also understands how other people learn and can contribute and sort of in, engage in different ideas. People here listen to one another well and they write well and they think critically. So I could I could talk about the Pratt, you know, the introduction EE, the introduction to engineering class in Pratt, the Thompson Writing Program. Um, you know, Candace could tell you a little bit about University 101 courses that we've been introducing across undergraduate education, all of which are designed to help all of our students engage and think um, and sort of work together and sort of and respect one another sort of viewpoints, lenses, and skill sets. So our employer is fascinating to talk to our employers, including I think people from somebody from LinkedIn scraped all of what the class of 2021 and 2020 were doing out in the world. Um, and we found that you know the, the job market that 2027 will go into, some of the jobs that you'll be looking for three years from now, they don't exist right now, right? So you know, UX, um, universal universally user experience, design, design work and software development, those kind of jobs weren't around in five years. And it's one of the top five jobs Duke grads will go into after 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 they graduate in, in May. Um, and those kind of jobs require a lot of creative thinking, a lot of skill development, um, and a lot of collaboration. Well, thank you. Well, it looks like we are having a few questions um, piped in, uh, but there's one that I took a notice of, and maybe uh, we can jump to this one. And Mary Pat, this is kind of in your realm, but how does Duke help the transition from high school to college? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so our new student and family programs group um, is they're standing at the line and the line is when you hit, yes, I'm coming to Duke. And then they take the baton from admissions and they start um, rolling contacts to you like you will not believe. That includes different departments that wanna give you a chance to learn about different majors and certificate programs and minors at Duke and things you could be thinking about. That includes our well Do Well or Duke Wellness Group, all of our residential programs, um, I, I, it's probably my chance to talk to you a little bit about Quadex, um, which is our living and learning program. Um, when you come in first year and you live in your residence hall, you get assigned to an East Campus residence hall, and that residence hall is affiliated with West Campus and one of seven quads that are part of Quadex. Um, your quad council, we just elected our quad council leaders. They just had a brunch on Sunday, uh, Saturday, celebrating everybody that led this year and that are sort of picking up that sort of work that next year all your quads talk to you, student health will be talking to you, the International Student Center DISC um, will reach out to everybody with a home address um, or, a, or a citizenship around the world. Lots and lots of people start making contact um, with students coming in. Angela, my cat, has joined the webinar. Um, and um, she's, I'm sorry, she's definitely gonna be here in one second. Um, but all, you'll have lots and lots of experiences over the summer. A learning series. We have a we have a thirty days to Duke. Um, more and more contact as the arrival day starts, and then experiential orientation. We'll have twenty of them, I believe, this year. All of which are designed for all of our incoming students to give you a chance to work on a project and in a cohort and in a common purpose for five or six days with members in the class of 26. If transfer students, we have project transfer. Um, this summer we have project preseason for some of our summer athletes, our inner our athletes who um, will be doing a lot of stuff over the summer. So when they're in season at the beginning of the year, they do their experiential orientation over the summer. Project band is new this year for everybody who's thinking about the marching band, but we have 20 different programs, camping, community volunteering, organic farming, um, working with kids. There's there, the project list will come out um, right after you also say yes to do. So lots of transitional things and maybe can't I don't know if you want to talk about the pre-major advising part because you'll also hear from your advisor sorry Angela's here sorry okay. that's all right yes I I think advising is one thing that folks might want to know about a little bit because Duke is not a place where we would say now that you're here figure it out on your own right <laughs> yeah so you will those who decide to come to Duke which I hope is many of you um, will hear from their college advisors in um, July um, instead of waiting until you arrive on campus to think about classes, we do that beforehand so that when you get here, you can like focus on building community through your experiential orientation. Um, and that person, your college advisor, um, is one person who um, is going to help guide you through thinking not just about your class choices, but what motivates you. Um, because, you know, you might say, oh, I'm really interested in public policy. And a question is, well, why? And, you, you know, maybe if, you're, if your answer is, well, I'm interested in 
food inequality, well, maybe um, there are actually really great classes in sociology or anthropology or political science. And so just kind of unpacking um, those uh, your interests to figure out where are the other ways that maybe we can think outside of the box to 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 meet um, to to meet where you are, you know, to to further your interests and deepen your knowledge about any particular thing that you're really concerned about. So, um, pre major advising is one of the ways that we you know kind of help people move from um, high school to college, but then we have other, we have directors of academic engagement, we have um, learning uh, consultants who help us to think about how we learn best. Um, you know, a lot of what, you know, for some of us in high school is um, someone gives me a concept, I tell you the concept. College is, I'm going to tell you a concept, now your job is to apply it in all of these sorts of situations. So it's a different way of learning, it's a different way of thinking. And there are resources to help students, um, you know, figure out how they learn, think about time management skills. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is that, and, and this kind of goes back into kind of Mary Pat's corner, that, you know, all of us are thinking about our mental health and our emotional health. And we don't leave that at home. We don't leave that when we graduate. And those are also um, resources and points of contact that we make sure that students have when they when they show up um, here at Duke, just to make sure that um, that you know their well, you know, your well-being inside and outside of the classroom um, are, you know, are well connected across your points of your career. That's great. And Mary Pat, I'm going to jump back to you on that one because Candace, you brought up a great point in terms of student wellness, mental health, as Christoph talked about earlier, the kids really went through a rough time here. Yeah, they really did, you know, this journey. But student affairs is part of student wellness, right? Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of student wellness is a is a common uh, commitment across university. Our faculty are looking at our curriculum um, and sort of possible things that might happen down the road. And they met with all of us in the wellness space to ask about how we can really be intentional um, and furthering student well-being in the classroom. Um, you know, Duke Hospital and Duke Health um, started the Exercises Medicine Conference several years ago. And so we think all the time about physical activity and sort of and meditation and, and sort, of, sort of broad broad scale um, ways to create the conditions for a healthy and dynamic um, experience at Duke, right? Um, we have um, our philosophy overall on student well-being is that belonging, knowing your supports, and being known by other people are the biggest protective factors for making sure that you have a full and thriving mental health experience and well-being experience while you're an undergraduate. And so that means that's part of why we put Quadix into play a couple of years ago with the idea that you automatically have a place where you belong, kind of like Hogwarts, um, you know, from the from when you get from when you click that button and say, I'm coming to Duke, um, you have a community that is your home base uh, for your four years, particularly your first and second year, but really your whole four years. Um, it's why students can live on campus all four years. If that's if that's important to them, we require on campus for all for three of your four years. Um, it is why we have wellness programs connected with all of our identity and cultural centers so that we have things that are well-being programs, but also mindful of, you know, what does that look like in the LGBT community, right? What does that look like in the, um, in our Center for Muslim Life uh, sort of student, student affiliate community? Um, how do we think about ways, I could keep going and giving examples, but how do we think about ways that we, we bring you know, wellness programming and this idea of belonging and connection um, to all aspects of a student's experience? Our dining team is a huge part of how we think about well-being and mental health here at Duke. Um, we just won an award. We're pretty proud of it for having the first uh, dining facility at a college in America that has the has uh, tree nut free um, sort of campus throughout the facility. So part of it that's not free, um, but it's peanut and tree nut free across the East Campus Marketplace. Um, you know, we, we want people to feel like they have information about the food they're going to get and how they're going to navigate and that they can have good resources to this piece about being known and understood um, and belonging. Your, your advisor is a piece of that. Your dean is a piece of that. Um, your RA and the RCs, the faculty and residents, the community that sort of lives with you. We have academic guides that live in the, in the residence halls, all of which is designed to be sort of a, a tapestry or sort of whole mosaic of people that know you 
and who you are on your bad days, who you are on your good days, how you're growing and adjusting. You know, as Candace said, you think maybe you're going to do public policy and then you realize, I thought I was going to do public policy, but I don't know what anything, you know, I haven't, I haven't learned about what anthropology is yet. And maybe cultural anthropology is interesting because that's not something I took in high school, but helping you sort of develop uh, your intellectual pathway, connect to peers, find, find people that know you and are going to be with you on your harder days, our experiential orientation, probably the best data we have about experiential orientation last year um, tells us that, you know, we have 500 students who want to be leaders this year of the program. There's 300 and something spots to be a leader in the program. Um, and the, the, the data we got from the class of 26 is that their experiential orientation mentor, having somebody who they could call when they ran into that first rough test, when they, when they realized that they were kind of homesick, when they were just figuring out that some of those skills had to really shift for college, having somebody to go to, it's, it's connected to mental health, it's connected to well-being, it's connected to um, feeling like you can be your whole authentic self here. We have amazing resources for students who are navigating, um, you know, mental health diagnoses that are going to be more, more sort of, you know, consistently part of their experience throughout their undergrad time too. Um, so I don't want to, I don't want to not give a framework to that as well. Um, but I'm sort of speaking at, at sort of a population level that creating a healthy campus where it's okay, we, lo we lower stigma around help see him when we need it, we create a connect, we create an opportunity for people to feel like they're belonging um, and evolving with, with a, with a cohort of people here. And that's, a, that's a big part of how we're, how we're operating at Duke. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do want to touch base. I know I see a lot of questions coming in. When, when does registration start? When do we move in? That, so I do kind of want to uh, address that a little bit, but maybe while I'm speaking for a little bit, if you as panelists want to look through the Q&A and if you see any questions that you want to address, uh, go ahead. But first I will say this, and this is maybe unique to Duke, but as parents, please understand that Duke does not require a monetary deposit. Okay, you just either you accept our offer, you accept the Duke community standard, that kind of thing. And once the class is set, and again, the, uh, the response deadline is, is May 1st, once the class is set, then the Office of Student Affairs send out what we call the Blue Book, right? <laughs> Which is literally one-stop shopping. It contains everything that you need to know in there in terms of Ah, how to set up your ID, how to get your photo, and so you can uh, email address, uh, when you should start thinking about registering for classes, uh, where you can ship materials for move-in day. I mean, it's one-stop shopping, you know, uh, um, that kind of thing. And then I think one of the great traditions or one of the great things that we have here um, that the kids really seem to enjoy is move-in day come August where it's organized, you as parents will drive up, you won't have to lift a finger to get your students' materials to their room, the, our student advisors all move, and, and then you're here for a whole week before classes even start. So talking about the transition from high school to college, you know, you're going to be meeting with your pre-major advisor, you're going to be meeting with people in your residence hall, I, you know, I just think it's a, a great thing for that first week before classes start, uh, that kind of thing. So once you deposit, have a little patience, anticipate the blue book, all your answers will be in there, right? Um, questions, you see any that came up? I, I saw one that I do want to touch on. I, maybe you don't have to save it for later, but somebody asked if the Duke basketball team would advance a little further in the NCAA tournament next year. I have no control over that. We have no, but we're all excited and looking forward to it as usual. Um, I'll, I'll, let me chime in just for a second about um, a couple of questions. People were asking about changing majors within a school, between schools. Um, in in the Pratt School of Engineering, you don't de you don't declare a major until the end of your first year. So you've got and 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 they have a course specifically designed to help incoming students explore the different parts of uh, the the different offerings in the Pratt School. So you are you are under absolutely no pressure, obligation, need. To declare a major in the engineering school until the end of your first year and you've had a chance to explore. Uh, in, in Trinity College of Arts and Sciences, 
the time that you the time that you need to declare a major isn't until you register for classes for your junior year. So the end of your sophomore year is when you is when you first have to declare a major. There is an incredible amount of flexibility. Um, we we give you time. The advising is set up so that you can so that so that you can explore the different majors. So first of all, um, you should feel comfortable not being funneled into a particular major. Second is majors are not selective. Right? You don't you, there there's not a there's not an enrollment cap on any of the majors. Once you're in a school, you can choose any of the majors. So that's the second thing and 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 if you are interested in pursuing more than one academic area, whether it's a second major, whether it's a minor, whether it's an interdisciplinary program like a certificate, um, all of those things are, are common. Um, the advisors know how to help you do that. So, so you should feel comfortable being able to explore more than one thing if that's what you wanna do. Transferring between schools, once you are at Duke, the process of, of changing from Trinity to Pratt or Pratt to Trinity at the end of the first semester or at the end of the first year is pretty straightforward. Typically, as long as you're in good academic standing, you will be able to switch switch between those two. Um, we we take this the, we take the notion of, of of reducing, if not eliminating barriers very seriously. And we want people to be comfortable in the in the program that they're pursuing. To do it before you arrive is maybe possible, but it's uncertain. Um, uh, first of all, any request to switch from one to the other before you arrive needs to come to the admissions office and it needs to come once you've in indicated that you're going to enroll or not. We're not, we are, we aren't gonna make any changes until, until after May 1st, we have a sense of of, 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 of what the enrollment looks like. Um, we do have at that point, at the right as of May 1st, we do have goals for the target size for Trinity College and goals for the Pratt School of Engineering. So we may or mean we may or may not be able to have you switch before you arrive. But once you're here and after you have a semester or a year under your belt and you've had a chance to explore the offerings in, in, your, in your particular area, there's an incredible amount of flexibility. Um, I'll say one final thing. Well, somebody asked about a gap year. We have a wonderful gap year program um, that, that, that we, don't, we don't tell you where to go. We leave that up to you. We encourage students to take a gap year. I think gap years are, are, are pretty marvelous. We do have a specific program applicate. You can apply for it now called literally called the Duke gap year program that, that, um, helps you look for opportunities to, to, to find gap years, but primarily makes it possible for you to get up to $15,000 in funding during your gap year to help you, to help you with the expenses of your gap year. So that's a, so we are, we are real proponents of the gap year and, and we encourage anybody who wants to, who will hold the space for you. We will hold your space at Duke as long as you promise to enroll after your gap year. As long as you commit to that, we will hold your space for you and we encourage people to take a gap year. So I just wanted to answer a couple of those questions. That's great, Christoph. And I think information on the gap year, there is a link in their acceptance letter that details it, that, that kind of thing. Yes, 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 yes. Um, anybody else see anything? I, just, I see a couple of questions about Durham. Um, and just just a little a, a, I will I will say that coming to Duke means moving to the city of Durham. Um, we are so fortunate to be in a vibrant city um, that is, you know, Duke is not right downtown. You know, some campuses, some you might be looking for a city school experience where you're right downtown, you sort of walk off campus and you're, you know, right on a main sort of street. We're not quite that. If you haven't been to campus yet, and if you might, not, if you're visiting virtually, um, you can get to downtown Durham from the East Campus in about six or seven minutes um, walking. Um, we Duke um, 
Duke is so fortunate to be here, and we have a we have a real commitment to being engaged in in our city in a way that um, we are one of several colleges in the area. Um, North Carolina Central University, historically black college, is also in Durham. Durham Tech is our biggest university, our biggest college um, in this in the city of Durham by a lot. We are tiny compared to them, and then we're in the research triangle. So we also have Carolina and state and a whole bunch of other schools. So we're sort of a we're we're an urban campus, or we're we're actually a, we're a, we're right next to the downtown. So we're, we're kind of our own our own campus right near downtown, um, but lots and lots of opportunities to engage, volunteer, get connected, learn. Um, so learn about learn about city government, learn about county government, um, and be a part of a community that is dynamic and growing um, and has a lot of proud traditions independent of Duke um, and has a lot of historical partnerships with Duke. Um, so it's it's a, it's a, it's a it's an amazing place to go to school. I think if you're thinking I'm going to go to Duke and I'm going to be far away from any kind of bustle, you're not. You're going to be quite close to bustle. You could spend four years pretty much living on campus and not setting foot into downtown Durham. Um, you would be missing out um, if that was the way that you approached your your Duke experience. That's that's a great call. I, I've been down here since 99. You know, I've lived in Washington, D.C. I grew up right outside New York City. There's a lot of stuff here. That's that's just awesome. You know, those that's those kinds of those kinds of things. Um, what else can we talk about here a little bit? It's getting close. We're getting close to the end here. So unfortunately, we, we're not going to be able to get to all the questions. Um, that kind of thing. Um, but what else do we need to what else do we need to talk about here? Well, one student asked about, um, you know, just kind of beyond financial aid, uh, what are some of the other ways that Duke helps to cover additional cost? And I just want to point students to um, our Duke Life office, and that is for our resources and um, for um, first generation college students and low students. Um, and there, I mean, you know, uh, we care. We want students not just to come to Duke. We want students to get through Duke. We want students to thrive. And we know that there are other kind of um, obstacles that come with, you know, going to college. I am a first generation college student. So I know, like, you know, where do you find people? There are certain kinds of etiquette right? There's this kind of hidden curriculum sometimes, and that's at any place like Duke. And so we are really attuned to that, both the kind of social dimension, the economic dimension. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I, I just kind of pointed that out, um, that we recognize that students, that there are, you know, costs beyond financial aid for technology and class resources, course resources, um, you know, maybe even professional attire, um, and then just having students that are, um, have a similar experience as you. And so um, I just wanted to make sure that um, students know that we recognize that um, folks are coming from all over the world, right? We have um, resources for international students. We have resources for students who um, are the first in their uh, families to go to college, low income students. Um, and then, you know, all sorts of identity um, areas. But I, I, I um, just want to press upon that sometimes that kind of those questions are um, intimidating to ask and we recognize that and um, want to make sure that we take the step forward to rec you know recognize that those resources are out there and to draw you in. Great, thank you. I you know on that note, I certainly want to encourage families, students to explore our undergraduate admissions website. There are links to various departments from our website. I see some questions regarding what about AP credits? Uh, what about this? What about that? Unfortunately, uh, this program is not about addressing specific programs, that kind of thing. Um, but certainly, this is a big decision for you guys. So I encourage you to, I don't know, for lack of a better term, do your homework. Dig in a little bit. Um, um, information about financial aid, visit the Karsha Office of Undergraduate Financial Support Office. Um, people are asking about research. Okay, please access 
uh, the undergraduate research support office. Uh, if you're thinking about maybe going on to med school, the health professions advising office. If you're thinking about, oh, geez, study abroad, uh, the global education office, all those resources are there right now just by pointing and clicking. And then certainly on top of that, should you be able to come to Blue Devil Days, one of our in-person events, you will be able um, to talk to somebody face-to-face -face regarding uh, those options as well. Um, I did see a question in terms of what is the schedule for any of the Blue Devil Days events. I will tell you that those are coming at the end of the month and we're finalizing those schedules in terms of speakers, spaces, that kind of thing. So once those schedules or itineraries are, are, are finalized, those, those will be posted um, um, and, as well. Um, one question that I did see that I kind of want to throw out and, you know, and maybe uh, you can tie these into any final remarks or thoughts that our panelists have, but what is your favorite thing about Duke? <laughs> hey, you know, before, before I answer that, um, I will say um, students and parents are going to be getting a lot of emails from us. Um, and from other people at the university in the in the in this month, and so a lot of those questions um, will either be answered, or there will be, or there will be, they will point you to resources, whether it's credit, whether it's study abroad, whether it's aid, whether it's support, whether it's research. Um, keep your eyes on those emails. Um, if you can come to Blue Devil Days, it's great. It doesn't matter which day you come to. There will be four one-day programs. They're all going to be essentially the same. So, uh, so come if you can. But if you can't, um, pay attention to what's to what's coming in your in your uh, in in your inbox. Um, and and I'll just say, um, you know, my my you know, my favorite thing about Duke is something that I mentioned earlier. Um, I mean, I like how the students treat each other. I I, I do, and and um, um, but what I, what I like more, it, what I like more is how the faculty treat the students. Uh, the, the, that, that is the thing that I think for me was a little, un, uh, not something that I, that I thought about much beforehand and, and that really struck me is, is the degree to which, um, so many of the faculty are really excited by the growth and the progress of the students like that like you'd be it's not a it's not a unidirectional faculty member providing information to the student it's really encouraging growth development uh expertise excellence creativity um they really enjoy it and and that's you know that's i think that's really special i don't think it's that usual uh and it's something that you can expect Christoph, I think that's a great point because I typically say when we in admissions, we're not making those decisions for ourselves. We have our faculty in mind as we make admissions decisions because it's the faculty that are going to be dealing with students on a daily basis, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. Yep. Mary Pat, any thoughts? Candace, any thoughts? Um, okay, this is kind of random, but someone asked about dorm layouts for first year students. And I'm um, last year lived with this guy named Ethan Wright, and he made this really like one hour long YouTube um, video. So it's not official Duke, but I trust Ethan and uh, he might, that video might be really helpful. I would say one of the things um, that I love about Duke is knowing that there are 190,000 alumni. And, um, you know, if someone calls me as a Duke alumna to do something for them, to call, to contact, to share, to connect, I will do it because I'm a Duke alum and I would do that for another Duke alum. And most of us are like that. So not only are students um, kind and caring with each other, and I know that because I live with 135 first year students, um, but also because I'm an alum and I would do that. And I know so many of my other, um, you know, peers across decades um, would do the same. 
Um, and I, I'll echo both Christoph and Candace's ideas about their favorite things about Duke. And I'll add that um, one of the things I love about, about Duke, and it's it might be like low key, not as well understood by everybody who doesn't sort of kind of hang out on campus every day. We are young and scrappy. And by that, I mean, the university um, is still figuring out how to make its mark on the world, isn't sitting on its laurels, isn't saying, oh, you know what, we, we've already gotten this all down as doing it the exact right way. Um, and and that, that sort of blends into the undergraduate experience in the sense that undergrads have an awful lot to offer into this question of how we're gonna go out and make the world better. How are we gonna do something as an institution where we can really um, sort of make our mark and sort of create more justice, more, more knowledge, more research, um, and more um, interdisciplinary complex problem solving in the world. I know that sounds a little schlocky, but people here really mean it. You know, we are, are sort of where we're headed and sort of what, what's happening at Duke now and going forward. This is a dynamic place and undergrads have a major voice in how we think about how we're going to jump in and solve those problems together. I, it's It sounds like a line until you stop literally anybody. You can stop any professor, anybody who works in the university systems in any, in any role, and you can stop any student and say, what do you think about this? People are like, oh, it's a good question. It's a good problem. Like, what can we do about it? It goes to collaboration. It goes to this focus on um, connection with mentors and sort of and share, working together to solve, solve hard problems. Um, it's fun to be here. Great. Thank you. Well, on that note, we said we were going to just be here for an hour, and it's an hour right on the dot. But I want to thank my panelists. Thank you, guys, for taking time to be here. I want to thank uh, the parents and students that are in attendance. Like I said, I, I hope this provided a little information so that you want to dig deeper and, and get a sense of things. Again, our congratulations for a job well done. Um, good luck in your college selection process. We do hope it's Duke. This is a marvelous, marvelous place to be. Um, and good luck moving forward. And I thank you. I thank the folks, Paul, behind the scene, uh, Colleen, Andrea, who've been behind the scenes as well. But uh, a big warm thanks to everybody. And uh, have a great rest of the week. Enjoy April and take care. See you on campus. We'll That's see you right. on campus. See you on campus. Take care. <laughs>